Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Francisca and on this channel I share sewing tutorials, pattern tutorials, DIY and craft tutorials as well as give you sewing tips and hacks to help your sewing journey. Okay, so in today's video I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful dress that you can see here and I made this dress in such a way that it is fit for maternity. What I mean is that it is fit for people who are pregnant, okay? So you are going to see what I did to ensure that a regular person can wear this, a pregnant person can actually wear this. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Kindly click the subscribe button, click the bell so you get updates when I post new videos. And now let's jump right into our tutorial. I'll be using a um, normal shirt fabric and what I have here is two and a half yards. So I don't know if I'm going to exhaust all of them, but let's see as we go. I got two and a half yards of this. And you can see the direction that I placed my fabric. I folded my fabric so that I'll have the stripes vertically. Do you understand? Now I've gone ahead to draft my basic bodice pattern. This is a basic, a simple basic bodice pattern. I have a tutorial on that. So I don't want to have to go ahead and do this process all over again. I'll link it up in my description box. You will see an eye that will pop up somewhere above this video. You can go ahead and watch that if you don't know how to draft a basic bodice block. Now I'm doing something that is also going to be maternity friendly. The difference for this is that you are going to take into consideration just your under bust and not your waist. So anybody can actually wear this because this is actually going to have a belt that will wrap around the body for, you know, more fitness. Okay. So the fact that we're making this even for maternity wear does not mean that somebody that is not pregnant cannot wear this. You can definitely wear this. If you check the thumbnail, the lady wearing the dress is actually not pregnant. What I did was to draft my basic bodice block from my shoulder to the under bust. Now, if you want this to actually be fitted properly, you want to just add about one to 1.5 inches after the under bust. Okay, so that it is not, you know, directly under the bust. So just add 1 to 1.5 inches. I have added it here. That's after the under bust too. I've added it here. I've added it here as well. And then I'm going to join the points like so. That's the difference if you're drafting something like this for a pregnant woman. Add 1 inches to 1.5 inches after the under bust. Whatever I have marked at the under bust here, which is 8.75 inches, inclusive of my dart allowance, I'm going to come right here and mark that as well, okay? I'll mark that 8.75 inches, and then I'm going to join it to my under bust, okay? The next thing I'm going to do now is to add a half an inch seam allowance here, add half an inch or one inch seam allowance, add half an inch seam allowance here at the armhole, at the shoulder slope, and at my neckline, okay? So I'll go ahead and cut this out with my seam allowances. So guys, I've cut out the front and this is it right here. What I did was to place the front um, fabric on fold on another piece of fabric that is placed on fold that is folded already. Then from the center front to the edge of this fold, I have 1.5 inches, which will serve as my seam allowance. Okay, so every other thing remains the same except my neckline and my armhole. So you can decide to leave your neckline as is. If you want it to be this low, Okay, or you can, you know, make it higher up. Do you understand? So I'm just going to make mine just a little bit high. Then I'll just curve it to my um, neck width, which is right here. Okay, so I just curve it like this. If you remember, for the front armhole, we came in by half an inch. So just come out by that half inch from the edge of the front armhole. Okay, just come out by that half inch. Connect it to the tip of the shoulder up like this and then connects from here to the side seam the bottom of the armhole okay so just go on to connect it like that and then we can go on to cut this out like this like this and like this then i'll go on to divide my zipper allowance part into two so we can have our back pieces separate after cutting the back piece out the next thing to do is to go on to, you know, either sew the side seam together, sew the shoulder slant, sew your darts, and then use a bias tape to conceal the raw edges of your neckline and your armhole. That is the first option. The second option is for you to cut another piece of fabric and use that to line, you know, your front and back bodies that you have here, okay? Or you cut a facing for your fabric. So what I'll be doing for mine is to line it. Since I'm going to be lining my bodies, what I did was to cut a duplicate piece for both the front and the back. Okay, so I'm going to take this to my sewing machine now and then I'm going to sew the darts for all the pieces. Okay, after sewing my darts for both the front and the back bodies, I went on to join the side seam by 
my seam allowance went on to join the shoulder seam by my seam allowance okay and i did this for both the main fabric and the one that will be serving as the lining fabric so what i'm going to do right now is to place them on top of each other with right sides touching okay and then i'm going to match the shoulder seams you know around one of the armhole i'm going to match it like this match the side seam at the other armhole and then i'll be sewing around this with a half an inch seam allowance so guys after sewing the armhole i did a top stitch and then what i'm going to do now is to open the fabric to have its right sides out like this okay so i'm separating the bodies one from the other this is the armhole that i sewed and then i'm going to push the lining fabric on the inside of that armhole like this okay so can you see what i'm doing i push it in like this and this is what i have for my bodies so here is my lining here is the main fabric here what we want to do now is to go on to sew the second armhole okay and before we do that you actually need to arrange your bodies as if it is fully lined so just go on to arrange it like this the next thing i'm going to do now is to just pick the shoulder seam around the armhole for both the lining and the main fabric okay so what i'm going to do is to can you see how i'm holding it i'm holding it like this and then i'll go on to place it like this with right sides um, touching i'll just clip it down like that so did you see what i did there i'll come to the uh, side seam around the armhole again for both fabric and lining i'm going to grab it like this and then place them on top of each other with right sides touching and then i'll clip it down like this so i'm basically going to grab my armhole for this part and this is how we are going to be sewing it i sew by a half an inch seam allowance from the shoulder seam to the side seam here so can you see from the shoulder seam to the side seam here and then from this side seam here i'm going to sew right back to the shoulder seam here okay and i'll be sewing with a half an inch seam allowance so guys after sewing the second armhole this is what i have i top stitched it as well so that it would appear neat on the outside and i just turned the fabric over and you can see how simple that was to turn over right so here is my bodice and what is left for me to do is to seal up the neckline is to sew the neckline by a half an inch seam allowance and to sew the zipper allowance part by a half an inch seam allowance so how are we going to do this first what you need to do is to open up your bodice like this okay and then grab the neckline with right sides touching so i'm going to pin the center of the neckline for the lining to the center of the neckline for the main fabric i'll just go on to pin that down so did you see what i did here so guys after pinning this down i'm going to spread the neckline so that all the seams come out okay so just i just brought it out like this i'll bring everything out like this as well so can you see what i'm doing just bring everything out so you'll be able to pin your neckline and then i'm going to after pinning the center front neckline i'm going to grab the shoulder seam like this okay i pin it down i grab the back neckline at the zipper allowance area i pin it down as well i'm going to repeat the same thing for this other side this is the center neckline i'm going to grab the shoulder seam okay i grab the shoulder seam where the front meets the back i pin it down then i grab the zipper allowance area where the back neckline ends which is right here and then i pin it down as well so this is my neckline front to back front to back i'm going to sew by a half an inch seam allowance do a top stitch and then what i'm going to do next is to sew the zipper allowance area which is right here straight down by a half an inch seam allowance do the same thing for the other side straight down by a half an inch seam allowance okay so guys after sewing my neckline by half an inch sewing my zipper allowance area by a half an inch what i'm going to do right now is to pull everything out like this okay so i'll go on to 
So I'll go on to pull everything out like this. And this is what we have, guys. This is our bodies. And then I'll go on to press the neckline and the armhole down as well as the zipper allowance area so that those places can relax really well, okay? So guys, I've gone ahead to cut the belt fabric and my belt fabric is measuring five inches in width. We are going to fold this into two, okay? Five inches in width at the bottom, 4.5 inches at the point where we are going to be sewing to the bodies of the dress, okay? And the length of the belt is 41 inches. I wanted this to be kind of long. So what I'm going to do right now is to fold this into two and then I'll be sewing by a quarter inch on this side for both of them after sewing by a quarter inch i went on to put the seam in the middle okay and then i did a diagonal stitch all the way to this point here about a quarter inch away from the edge because i want to have this um, part of the belt pointed so i'm going to go on to trim it off the excess off to have like a quarter inch left i'll do the same thing for this other one as well okay and then I'll go on to turn the belt right sides out. So I'll just push it in like this. I think I can use my finger for this. So I'll just push it in like this. And use a scissors to finish it up. I'm going to need a more pointed scissors so that I can poke out the ends of the belt really well. Like this, okay. Poke out this other end as well. And then once I have that poked out, I'll bring it out like this and then go on to give this a very, very good press. And I'll be repeating the same thing for the second belt piece as well. After pressing my belt, this is what I have. The next thing I'm going to do is to attach it to my bodice and I'll be attaching it to the main um, fabric, okay, the outer fabric. What I did was to open up the side seam a little bit and then I'm going to be inserting the belt like this about half an inch of this belt will go in okay and then i'm placing the edge of the belt about half an inch or um 0 0.625 inches from the edge of this fabric here because remember we are going to be attaching something to this by half an inch so you want to go with 0 0.625 inches or you want to go with three quarter inches so i'll just insert it like this and then i'll go on to sew this back up okay i will be sewing the belt inside by half an inch or a quarter inch and then i'll do the same thing for this other one and then we are going to go on to work on the remaining parts of the dress okay so guys um i have my fabric here for the lower part but of course we are going to need this upper part okay so what i did for the fabric that you can see here was to fold it into two I folded it into two like this okay two equal parts i folded it into two and then i went on to fold it again okay so we are going to have like a perfect square so this perfect square is measuring 28 by 28 inches all around now we are cutting handkerchief flare for this lower part okay so like i said we are going to need um this bodies so what we basically need is the waist part inclusive of zipper allowance so I'll go on to measure everything that I have here and I have about 33 inches, okay? So what I'm going to do is divide that 33 inches by 6.28 and that will give me about 5 1 quarter. So what I'm going to do is to come right here. I'm going to mark 5 1 quarter all around like this, okay? So I place the tape rule at this pointed part here, mark 5 1 quarter. And I keep marking like that till I get to this other end, this part right here. So after marking my five one quarter, I will go on to curve it like this, okay? And after curving it, I will cut this out. Whatever I have left here will form the length of my skirt. So after removing five one quarter, I have about 22.75 here and i have about 22.75 here as well so because we are not um making normal 360 circular flare what we are making is 360 handkerchief flare we are going to leave this like this okay this has become our skirt so this is what our skirt will look like 
So what I'm going to do now is to take this to my sewing machine. I will be hemming all the straight parts, okay? So I'll open it up. I have like my waist circumference in the middle there. I will hem this edge. Do the same thing for this side, right here and right here, all around, hem everything. So guys, I'm done hemming the bottom of the flare and this is what I have right here. Another thing that I did was to stitch on the waist of this um, flare so that the fabric doesn't stretch more than it's supposed to. It's a trick I started trying very recently and it has been working well for me. So I folded my flare like this because we are going to cut open one end where we are going to be attaching our zipper and the part that we are going to be cutting is this um, shorter side, okay? So I'll just pick one side from here and then what I'm going to do is to cut it open. This one that we are cutting open is what is going to form our back seam. Okay. So guys, after opening it up, this is what I have. So you have the option of, you know, actually hemming this or doing an overlock stitch at this open part right here. Okay. But as for me, I will go on to hem it you know, like this, same way I hemmed the bottom of the flare, I'll do the same thing for these two sides. After hemming the zipper allowance part of this handkerchief flare, the next thing I'm going to do is to place the flare on top of the bodice, okay, with right sides touching. So I place it on top of the bodice like this, and then I pin down. So I'm going to go on to sew the bodies to the flare by a half an inch seam allowance from the center front all the way to the zipper allowance part. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side as well. So from the center front to the zipper allowance part by half an inch before we're going to come right back to fix our zipper. I've attached the bodies to the flare and this is what we have. The next thing I want to do is to fix my zipper. Okay, I'll be using an invisible zip for this. You can also decide to go on to um, use buttons and button holes for yours. It depends on what you want. Okay, so I'll be fixing a zipper for mine. So what I'll go on to do is to just place this invisible zip right here. Okay, I'll place it right here and sew by my zipper allowance all the way to where I want the zipper to stop, okay? I'll do the same thing for the other side. Place the zipper on here like this, and then I'll go on to sew by my zipper allowance to the same place where I would sew on this other side, okay? They must end at the same place. And then once I do that, I'll go on to seal the bottom of the skirts, whatever gap that I have left, I'll go on to seal it up. So after sewing on my zipper, this is what I have guys. What I just did to seal up the remaining gap that I have here was to hold the fabric under the zipper, okay? And then I stitched it down. And this is the result of our dress, guys. This is what we have. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you know you enjoyed this tutorial, kindly give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell so you get updates when I post new videos and I'll be seeing you guys in my next tutorial. Bye!